In this lesson, we're going to go over the anti-spoofing tool known as DKIM, or Domain Keys Identified Mail, including how DKIM works, how to publish your DKIM keys to your DNS records, signing messages with DKIM, and verifying DKIM signatures and in incoming messages. Here's an overview of how DKIM works. The sending organization publishes a public DKIM key to their DNS records, and this key can be generated in Security Gateway. And then the sending server or gateway, security gateway in this case, signs outbound emails from local users with the corresponding private key. When the receiving server receives the email, it sees that the message has been signed with a DKIM and then checks the DNS records of the domain contained in the DKIM signature and compares the public key found in that domain's DNS records with the private key that was used to sign the email message. If those keys do not match, then the message can be rejected or quarantined. If the public and private key do match, then the message can be accepted and delivered to its recipient. So in this lesson, we'll go over the DKIM signing settings in Security Gateway, and then we'll go over the DKIM verification settings. When setting up DKIM for your domain, the first thing to do is configure a DKIM record and configure DKIM signing. And you'll find these settings under the DKIM signing section here under the anti-spoofing menu in Security Gateway. DKIM signing works on a per domain basis. So the first thing to do when you get ready to sign your messages with DKIM and get DKIM set up for your domain is to select the appropriate domain that you want to sign via DKIM using the drop down menu shown here in the upper right hand corner. And then you can check this box to sign outbound messages using Domain Keys Identified Mail or DKIM. And then the next step is to create what we call a selector. Selectors allow you to create multiple DKIM keys under a single domain, which might be useful if you need to give, say, for example, separate DKIM signing controls among different departments or different date ranges or for third parties acting on behalf of your domain. And as you can see, I already have one here created called test, but let's go ahead and create a new selector. So if we're just getting started with Security Gateway with the new server, that would be the first thing we do. We click on the new button here to create our selector. And then we give the selector a name. Since I have one called test, I'm going to just going to call this test2. And then click save and close. And notice you'll receive this pop-up message indicating that you'll need to publish this selector to your DNS records. And I'll show you how to do that in the next steps. So we'll click OK. And now we can click on this link to view the information that you'll need to publish this DKIM public key to your DNS records. Now recall that messages that are signed by DKIM are signed using the private key. And then receiving servers can verify that DKIM signature using the public key that is published to your DNS records. So this provides the public key information that you will need to publish to DNS. So we'll click on this link. And this is your DNS record right here, this entire string of characters. So all of this needs to be published to your DNS record. And you can copy that and place it in a text file somewhere so that you will have it readily available when you are ready to publish it to your DNS record. And I'll show you what that looks like on my DNS server. So in my DNS server, under forward lookup zones, I have my domain of example.com and I have my DKIM key here, notice that when you publish your DKIM selector or key to DNS that you will be publishing it as a text record or a TXT record. So when setting it up in your DNS environment, you would name the DNS record DKIM and you'd put your fully qualified domain. So for example, if it's mail.example.com and then you'd put your DKIM key in here. Now, when creating a new DNS record, depending on what system you were using for DNS, you would select text or txt as the record type and then create your record and then this is where you would put in dkim under the record name and then in the text box this is where you would paste the dkim key that was created in security gateway so for example 
if I go back into Security Gateway, I would simply copy the DKIM selector text that was generated in Security Gateway, and then go back to my DNS server and paste it into the text box as shown here. Of course, this is using DNS Manager in Windows. If you're using a different system for DNS, then it may look a little bit different, but the same concepts will still apply. So now that we have our DKIM selector created and we've added the DKIM text record to DNS, we can now configure the remaining options on this screen. And along the right-hand side here, you have a number of DKIM signing options. The first option allows you to set a DKIM signature expiration date. And the default is seven days, after which point DKIM signatures expire. The DKIM signature expiration period is measured by a timestamp that is indicated within the X equals tag. And the timestamp used in the X equals tag is formatted based on the number of seconds from a designated period of time. And it is measured against another tag that is found within the DKIM signature of an email message that uses a T equals tag or timestamp tag indicating the time that the message was sent. So if we look at the headers in an email message, here is the T equals tag that is inserted into the DKIM signature when the message is sent. And then here is the X equals tag, the DKIM signature expiration that is added based on the number of days that are entered into Security Gateway to use as the DKIM signature expiration time frame. And again, notice that these timestamps are in a standardized format based on the number of seconds that have elapsed within a given period of time. The next setting, when enabled, will insert the query method into the DKIM signature via the Q equals tag. And currently, the only query method that is supported is the DNS text record query method. And if we go back to our example, here is that tag inserted into the DKIM signature. The next option allows you to include a body length count tag within the DKIM signature. This tag represents the number of characters from within the message body that were used to compute a hash version of the message body. And if the tag is not present in a DKIM signature, then it is assumed that the entire message body was used when computing the DKIM body hash. And this setting is optional and not recommended because it can sometimes be difficult to control or could possibly lead to various verification errors. And then when the next option is selected, Security Gate will insert a Z equals tag into the DKIM signature, which contains a copy of the message's original headers and consequently can make your DKIM signatures quite a bit large, so this option is disabled by default. Enabling this option might be useful in specific situations where a domain owner would need to diagnose certain types of DKIM verification errors. And then the next section governs the process of canonicalization for message headers and the message body. What canonicalization does is it simply standardizes or normalizes the message headers and body before the DKIM signature is created. And this might be necessary because some mail servers and gateways make inconsequential changes to the message that could possibly break the DKIM signature if these items were not standardized. So in other words, this could be thought of as converting data that could be represented in a variety of different ways into a standardized form. And with each, you can select simple or relaxed. So when we're talking about canonicalizing message headers, simple is the stricter method and allows no changes to the message headers in any way, whereas relaxed would allow for a few minor changes such as converting header names to a lowercase or converting one or more sequential spaces to a single space, various other small changes. And simple is the default setting here. You can also apply simple or relaxed canonicalization to the message body. And when simple is selected, then empty lines at the beginning of the message body would be ignored, although no other changes to the body would be allowed. Whereas relaxed would allow for blank lines at the end of the message, ignores spaces at the end of lines, reduces sequences of spaces in a single line to a single space character, and various other minor changes. And again, simple is the default setting here. 
The major point to take away from canonicalization of headers and message body is that choosing simple for each is the stricter method and allows for almost no modifications of the message headers or message body before signing the message with DKIM. But this could cause the DKIM signature to be invalidated if the message is forwarded during the delivery process. So selecting relaxed can help cut down on these types of issues. And if you've made any changes on this screen, you can use this link at the bottom to copy these custom settings to your other domains. So now that we've discussed the outbound side of DKIM, DKIM signing, let's talk about the inbound side of DKIM or DKIM verification, which we can find right here under the anti-spoofing section in Security Gateway. And to verify DKIM signatures in inbound mail, simply check this box here. And then using the blank below, you can determine what to do if a message passes DKIM. So standard practice is to put a negative number of points to add to the message score in the blank provided. In other words, if an inbound message comes in, Security Gateway verifies DKIM for that message and the public key and the private key match then we can treat that message with less suspicion and more trust, and therefore we can deduct from the message score by entering a negative number in this field. So when you put a negative five in this blank, for example, five points will be subtracted from the message score. When the next box is checked, verifier honors body length count, or L equals tag, Security Gateway will honor that tag if it is found in the DKIM signature of an incoming message. So when the body length count is actually greater than the value contained within the body length count tag, then Security Gateway will only verify the portion of the message up to the body length specified in this tag. The remainder of it will not be verified. If the actual body length count is less than the value that you specify in the body length count tag, then the signature will not pass verification. In other words, the DKIM verification process will receive a fail result, indicating that at some point, a portion of the message was deleted, causing the body length count to be smaller than what is specified in the body length count tag. So in other words, some type of message tampering had taken place. This option is disabled by default. And then the next option allows you to determine whether DKIM verification requires the subject headers of incoming messages to be protected by the DKIM signature of those incoming messages. And this feature is also disabled by default. And you can configure exclusions for messages from whitelisted IP addresses, authenticated sessions, or messages from your domain mail servers. And like other settings within Security Gateway, you can configure these settings on a global or per domain basis using the drop-down menu at the upper right-hand corner. So I'll show you an example of the DKIM verification process within a message transcript in Security Gateway. If we go to the message log and we select an inbound message, we can find where Security Gateway performed a DKIM lookup in this section here. So it begins with Security Gateway performing the DKIM lookup, and the next line indicates the DKIM signature with the various DKIM tags that were included, which we explained in the first half of this lesson. So here you can see the canonicalization or C equals tag, the D equals the domain tag, the selector, the S equals, the body length count tag, the timestamp, the expiration timestamp, the query method tag, and then finally the remaining portion of the actual DKIM signature. We can then see that verification produced a result of good, verification passed, and five points were subtracted from the message score and DKIM verification ended. Here's another example where Security Gateway performed a DKIM lookup when an incoming message and found that the DKIM signature had expired for that message and therefore gave a neutral result. So the result here can be neutral, it can be passed, it can be fail, and you'll find more information in these few lines above where Security Gateway logs each step of the DKIM lookup process.